Well, hello everyone. We are back, back from our trip at Aircon uh, 2023. Yes. Back in the room where we started it all. <laughs> we were just talking about this like a couple of weeks ago. So we left for Aircon last week on Monday, uh, and then it was a four-day convention, Thursday through Sunday mm -hmm. in Harrogate in the UK. And uh, we just arrived back a couple of days ago, a few days ago. We got yeah. back on Monday. Left on Monday, got yes. back on Monday with the blessings of time change. Uh, <laughs> so going yes. there, we lost a day. Coming back, we stayed the same. Yeah, and I guess yeah. everybody here suffered daylight savings. When, and we didn't have to. We were really worried, or Naveen was really stressed out about having to do daylight savings in the UK. The but one hour difference, yeah. Fun fact. They don't do it at the same time as we do here in the U.S. It's shifted by like two or three weeks. So yeah. my dad, my dad is a stickler for this. He loves to <laughs> to let me know whenever there's daylight savings, be aware of it. So I got yeah. a text while we were in England and yes. I was like, how's that going to, how's that going to impact me physically? <laughs> like, what am I going to feel? Yeah. And so uh, it didn't have any effect. <laughs> well, the reason why we were so worried about it is because let me tell you, before we left for the convention, I really, I really shot myself in the foot because in the video where we were talking about Aircon, I mentioned that Naveen always gets really bad jet lag. Well, I had the worst jet lag she of my bad. life. Yeah. I did not sleep. I'm not sleeping. I haven't slept. <laughs> Last night yes. was the first night that I slept through the night. I guess I'm like a, I'm like a newborn, yeah. right? <laughs> we, we wear like a, our Apple watches to sleep yes. and we track our sleep. And if you look at the rings, uh, if you know what I'm talking about, you'll see that Monique's just have these huge wedges just yeah. kind of cut out. We call it the Swiss cheese. It looks like Swiss cheese for the past like 10 days. So in fact, I don't know if you can see this, but this is the Swiss cheese <laughs> that I'm mentioning. It's... So anything with color is sleep. Anything without color, no sleep. <laughs> Yeah, that was probably a really quick uh, video. Anyway, so enough about sleep, the convention. It was wonderful. Um, we didn't play a whole lot of games. So the difference games. between this year and last year is uh, last year we had the Airbus. So <clears throat> right. a few days before Aircon, uh, we, were, we got to board a bus with a bunch of wonderful folks and kind of go on a trip down to the convention center. And we did some stops at like um, at like board game stores and cafes and stuff like that. So we got to play a lot of games. This year, we skipped that entirely. They added on the fourth day, and then we did uh, a lot of events. Mm -hmm. We hosted a lot of events with the Watch It Play team, mm -hmm. who we were so excited to be able to see again, because this is kind of like the one time in the year that we knew for sure we would be able to get together mm -hmm. as a group. And uh, it's always a really, really fun time when we're together. Yeah. The weather, by the way, was wild. Uh, we learned why people in the UK constantly talk about weather. Mm -hmm. It's because their weather there has a mind of its own. Yeah, it, uh, it snowed while we were there. It snowed! Kill me! <laughs> it's so cold! You're fooling me! <laughs> Even the people there were like, snow, <laughs> weird. Yeah, <laughs> in March. Yeah. So the thing about snow over there, though, is it was very fleeting, which I found to be really, really interesting. On Wednesday, when we arrived in Harrogate, it started snowing a little, little flakes, bit. Little yeah. flakes. By Thursday, it started really snowing. Like, this, it really started coming down. Mm -hmm. Friday, there was a nice layer of snow. And then Saturday, it started melting. Yeah. And by Sunday, yeah. it was completely gone. It was beautiful. It was as if it never yeah. happened, except for one casualty where there was a snowman. <laughs> There's <laughs> a, a little bit of snow like left. An Olaf puddle just right. there. We were a little bit worried that it might impact the attendance at the con, but the convention was was wonderful. There were a lot of people there. Everybody was really enjoying playing uh, board games all over the hall. Uh, we talked to a lot of people who watch Watch It Played, who are viewers of, of our channel. And for a lot of them, it was their first time attending a convention at all. Yeah. And every time we asked them how it went, they all said they were having a really, really great time. They were meeting a lot of friends. Uh, somebody met a friend who lived just down the street from where they live, which was yeah, amazing. Just a random kind of a chance. Like yeah. they, they go into the convention like, oh, where are you from? I'm from this city. Oh, okay, what part of the city? This yeah. area. What street are you on? <laughs> that street. It's like literally neighbors. So that's really cool that uh, that people were able to connect like that. Right. And um, this hall that they had this year was much bigger than previous years or mm -hmm. last year, at least. It was different. So it was able to house so many more people. Mm -hmm. uh, they had huge, huge open areas to play games. Mm -hmm. uh, they also had a vendor area mm -hmm. where you can walk around to like different shops, pick up things right. up or demo games. Felt bigger than last year. It definitely felt bigger. Yeah. 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 And so just knowing what it's like to have our own local convention where you meet friends there who you only see at that convention. Mm -hmm. It was it's such a nice environment. Yeah. Yeah. Fun. It's it's very, very homely for everybody who attends. Mm -hmm. So like we were mentioning, we ran a few events with the Watch It Play team. Um, I ran a Green Team Wins, a large Green Team Wins event with Rodney. 
Uh, we had a live on the radar, which I was, if you see that, that's going to be on the Watch It Play channel uh, sometime soon. That was the peak of my jet lag. Yeah. It, it was taking all of me to keep my eyelids open. <laughs> <laughs> we also did a uh, Q&A, which yes. was just for the audience, so that will not be videotaped or anything like that. Mm -hmm. We had another massive strike tournament, just like last year. So this was a repeat event. And uh, of course, it ended with Rodney's really special gladiator ring mm -hmm. <laughs> strike box. And by the way, this was Naveen's first time ever playing strike yeah we ran the event last year yeah. i kind of got the brief update on like how to play the game but i actually never played it this is the first time i actually got a chance to play it it's pretty fun yeah um, you're basically just uh if you're not familiar with strike you're in this arena uh trying to throw dice to try to create pairs or sets of dice and just try to stay alive would you say this, it's a dexterity mm -hmm. game dice rolling dice, dice rolling game? really it's like, i mean there's some technique to the way you kind of hit yeah. the dice because you're trying to to get pairs to show up so you can stay right. alive uh, but it's basically you're just trying to have all your opponents strike out and uh, yeah. you be the last dice left in the uh, in the arena. Some strategy to it, but maybe, maybe there is strategy. There's I'm some. really bad at this game. Yeah. Maybe I just don't know what the strategy you is. You gotta know when to quit. Like on yeah, your yeah. turn, you have to throw some dice in. Right. And sometimes people push their luck when the odds aren't truly in their favor. So mm -hmm. that's where you kind of need to realize like, hey, I need to maybe not take a chance here. And a new event that we ran was a massive Just One event. And so that was new to this year. Mm -hmm. uh, it was really fun. It was wild because yeah. we actually had uh, 16 tables of six people at I, each table. Yeah, about six, yeah. And uh, what happened was oh, after a while, we morphed all the tables into eight and then down to four and then down to two. And then finally, we just did one massive really Just One. big one, yeah. Where we had like a hundred, I think we had like a hundred. Close to a hundred people close. all in just one game of Just yeah. One. Yeah, that very last 100 person Just One circle, we had uh, Rodney and Naveen leave the room and then all of us were writing at clues and kind of walking around like, uh, this is my clue. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't see this part. So if you're familiar with Just One, anybody who uh, has the same exact uh, clue mm -hmm. has to turn down and, and, and they basically are, are out of the game. They're not going to be able to expose to um, to the people who are guessing. Yeah. So Rodney and I were outside while they were all doing the thing where they're trying to figure out who has matching clues to, uh -huh. to erase. Which was kind of madness. And we we're like, <laughs> if we're the last people here, this is the last part of the event. Uh, it would be kind of like a sour kind of feeling <laughs> if we don't get this right. You better get this. We better get this right. <laughs> Uh, so we were a little nervous going into it, uh, especially with, you know, the pressure of about 100 people just like watching us try to get this clue right. Uh -huh. So we kind of agonized over it a little bit longer than I think we needed to. Uh -huh. But in the end, we got it. Italy. Italy. Yeah! And for anybody out there who attended the event, we did not cheat. They actually got it. But the clues were actually pretty good. And I was surprised that nobody else had pizza or something. Somebody really got away with pizza and pasta. Pasta was there at the end. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 100 people writing, only one person wrote pasta and one person wrote pizza. Amazing. That really helped out. We also went to their bring and buy, which is their version of the flea market. Mm -hmm. um, attendees bring their games and then attendees buy them. <laughs> yeah. And it's actually really organized. It's really well run, really yeah. well organized. Uh, every game is pre-labeled with, uh, with a barcode. Mm -hmm. So they, they actually scan it and then because if you're bringing it, other people are running kind of the shop that mm -hmm. is there. And then I guess you settle up at the very end of the con. I don't know exactly how well, that works. Well, the thing that's actually really neat, because I spoke with somebody who mm -hmm. had games in there, is because everything is scanned into a system, you can actually check online to see in real time whenever your things get sold. Gotcha. So that's not something I've ever experienced before. Yeah. Uh, usually flea markets are very, uh, you know, very put together Primitive. in the moment. Yeah. So I thought that was really cool. We actually did really well this year. We bought one game. Naveen, we did, did you good. care? All right, look at this. <laughs> The, How Naveen is the this? The Stauffer Dynasty. This is designed uh, by Andreas Stedding. Uh, he is uh, the designer of Firenze, which is a game I despise. But he <laughs> yeah. also designed, I believe, Hentes? Uh, no, Hansa Teutonica. Hansa Teutonica, that's for sure. Is and it Hentes? I think it's Hansa Teutonica for sure. Gugong, I think. Gugong, okay. I think it might be Gugong. Yeah, yeah. I don't but know. look I don't at this I cover. I mean, come on. Look yeah. at the back of the box. Have you played this? Do you like it? Let what me do know. you think? Let I us know. I think, though, I, I, I know nothing about this game, but I think it plays better at higher player counts. Well, we will find out. From what I understand, because there's an area control element to it. We're definitely going to play it since it. we hauled that from across the This is the one the ocean. purchase, and this is the barcode that I was talking about. That yeah. is part of the bring and buy. 
Yeah. That is not part of the game. This right. is the game barcode. Okay. There you go. <laughs> now so you know everything dynasty. about this yes. game. And that's about it. The weekend went by in a flash. And Wait. of course, whenever we attend these conventions, it's all about the people and who we meet. And it was just such a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. We learned the definition of cheeky. Cheeky. Do you have a definition? Anybody out there cheeky. who's from the UK? Let us know what you think the definition of cheeky is. Because <laughs> we have two possibilities, <laughs> is what you were told. Yeah. Well, I've always heard it in, in like, uh, in media and somebody finally defined it for us uh -huh. so. but we won't give it away we won't give it away just just so you all can give us your definitions of cheeky, of cheeky. and any other uh british words i guess or phrases because we learned quite a quite a few yeah uh, and it still stands. I think we mentioned this last year, but the word choice of people from the UK is is far far superior. Far superior. Yeah. To I like the sentence structure and the flow of the yeah. language there. Yes, yes, yes. It's so so much more comedic, and I don't know. There's there's a definitely a different style of language yes. over there, far more than just the accent. Right. That is, it's it's very pleasant. It, to hear. it takes me sometimes a second to catch up with like yeah, yeah. The, the like meaning. when I hear things. I'm like. Uh -huh. I get what you're saying. Oh, that's what you mean by that. <laughs> that's kind of me the entire time. As for games, we played a million games of Yokai Septet. <laughs> played a lot of that. Because yeah. we brought that and yeah. we played it on the train a bunch with mm -hmm. uh, Rodney and Chaz and just anybody who would play it with us. Mm -hmm. We played a lot of games of the game. So we actually picked up a new copy of that uh, while we were there. And it comes with the Fire expansion. So our current copy of the game does not have that. And it's also getting really, really worn. So. Mm -hmm. It was nice to just replace it. The box, the Pandasaurus one comes in, is just kind of like the, the Cabo yeah. box. If it's you're familiar like, with that one. It's the end, uh, end of an cap. aisle, the end cap of an aisle. So It's like this weird like rectangle where you can't shove the cards in, and because and it, of that, it's just getting smashed. It never so. closes ever again. It's a box that's meant to be thrown away. Yeah. So. <laughs> Literally, our original copy of the game is in a plastic Ziploc bag. Yes. So um, it's nice to pick up one that actually has some... As a box. Some, so yeah, heft. We also played a few games that Rodney brought. Mm -hmm. I think one was Fiction. Uh, we played Zuli, which was a really cute zoo making game. Mm -hmm. And we also played a bunch of games of um, A Fake Artist Goes to New York. And oh, yeah. if you've played that before, that's a hidden traitor game where you don't want to be the traitor because it's really anxiety inducing. And I was a traitor four times and Rodney <laughs> did me dirty. So yeah, if you've never played <laughs> this play game, that game with Rodney. If you've never played this game, this is one that it, uh, more players the barrier. Uh, essentially, it's kind of like Spyfall, where uh, one person is going to give a clue that everybody else is going to know mm -hmm. what it is, and only one person is going to not know what it is. Mm -hmm. Everybody is going to be drawing on the same paper. You're going to have one, pa one pencil, and the second you pick up your pen, that's it. You're done, and you pass it on to the next person. Mm -hmm. If you are the trader and it's really early in the round, and you can't like suss out what exactly everybody else is drawing, then you're a fool. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're gonna stick out like <laughs> a sore thumb. You made so, a fool in front of everyone. The goal is to just kind of try to like just create something a little bit small and contribute. That's yeah. like that makes sense. You want to okay. hide you in hide. the drawing. You yeah. want to make you want to you want to fool everybody else into thinking that you know what that word is. Right. And I was the fool three times in a row. Four times in a row. I was three times in a row. And on the fourth time, I said, okay, I really don't want to be the traitor this time. Rodney, can you make sure that I'm not? And Rodney said, okay, this is yours. Thinking, okay, in, in his defense, he thought that that wasn't the traitor uh, paper. I think you know where this is going. And I was the traitor. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. So anyway, that is my, um, that's my... But you won that round because York. everybody was like, well, Rodney said you're not the traitor. Yeah, nobody suspected so me in the end. you did win. We also played a massive version of a Hey, That's My Fish, which is a fantastic game. I think that's an underrated like game. game. It yeah. kind of came and went a long time ago, but that's a, that's a fun game. And they had a really big version of it at the convention, along with a massive Suro. And surprisingly, we actually played Bonanza. Oh, I love that game. Naveen always wants to bring Bonanza to conventions. I brought and I always it. say, I brought it. let's yeah. not play it. It's going to take too long. But uh, long. somebody else there had their game of Bonanza. They'd never played it before. And we thought, okay, we have to. We have to. We brought our copy to the convention, version. didn't play it. And then somebody else is like, hey, do you want to play this game? Mm -hmm. So we're like, perfect. Or and I was. His version was better than ours. It's a smaller box. It's a newer version of Bonanza that came out, I think, just a few years it's ago. It's the one that's dedicated to three to five players in yeah. a smaller box. Um, streamlined. It's easy to take around. Yeah, a little bit more streamlined. Yeah. Um, and it, in this one, it seemed like you cannot buy a third uh, bean plot. In yes. In this co yes. in this one versus in our copy, it doesn't have that rule. You right. can buy a third one. Yes. Uh, so it forced us to have to deal with each other and like yeah. make deals that you're like. 
just take it, just take these things, I need to get it off my plate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so it was fun introducing that. But uh, that was our, our Aircon experience. It's always a wonderful time. If you are in the UK or if you have interest in attending that convention, it's one that we highly recommend. I can only see that convention growing yeah. every year. Very play right. focused. Uh, they have a library there, yeah. they, um, lots of accommodations to be up there. Mm -hmm. uh, the train station is not too far, so it, it, if it's not snowing and a tree doesn't yeah, yeah. fall on the uh, on the train tracks, then it's pretty easy to get in and out of the city. Yes. Um, good food in the area, by the way. And food uh, trucks. They food, have trucks food trucks also there, there so really yeah yeah so and we they highly are, recommend it they are very attendee focused mm -hmm. so even if the convention grows they're always very mindful of the experience that attendees are are having when they mm -hmm. go there yeah. so last thing dexter is very happy that we're home yes he had a great time with my family <laughs> but he's been following monique around pretty much for the past three days i like, can't escape him <laughs> can't escape him yeah he kind of looks at me but he's just following monique yeah yeah <laughs> Um, so on the channel, we have more games coming up. We're going to be covering yes. more stuff. Uh, we're probably going to do a Let's Talk board game soon. Yes. We're going to cover uh, Rapid Fire, a couple different games. We're also we have playthroughs. Specifics, we have My Shelfie coming, mm -hmm. which is by the same designer as Elysium. Uh, we, we talk about him a lot on yep. our channel, so that should be coming up within the next day or so. Yeah, we played Neustjord, which yes. was the next in the Uwe Rosenberg series, and I feel pretty confident that I we're going to I think that'll comment. be on the channel this weekend. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, if hopefully we can soon. play our cards right. Yeah. Next week, we do have three Kickstarters that we're featuring, so you've been warned. There are going to be three <laughs> Kickstarters yeah, on the channel. We label them so that you know in, uh, when they're posted that they are Kickstarters. But uh, shortly after that, we have a, uh, a playthrough that we're really looking forward to making mm -hmm. because it is a game that people are talking a lot about. Sure. So stay tuned and uh, we'll see you all next time. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Bye.